Thanks so much, uh, Olani. Lee, go game. Let's go for it. Hi, everyone. Um, I just have a quick question for Opo Tolani. Can I ask this? Can I ask this based on your understanding of the e currency as it is right now? Ne? Yes. Uh, yeah. I just want to ask, do you think the modern ways of using money is going to last or it's going to collapse? What I'm asking is, Imali, as we know it, in fiat form, ne? Mm. Uh, do you think it's going to collapse or it's going to stand indefinitely? Because one, ex one or two examples, yes. South, Africa, South Africa right now has bailed the, the country out through a 500 billion package, if you like. Oh, goodbye, Bolegi, the Loma Leo. Yeah. And the Loma Leo, my Bolegi Ranjalo. Eminently so, we might find ourselves in a situation whereby our currency is hyperinflated, if you like. Yes. So, from your experience, do you, do you think? I just wanted just to start here because we are speaking towards money. So, I'm yes. just trying to interrogate. I'm trying to interrogate. Do you think, if it as it stands, it's going to stand indefinitely or somewhere, somehow? Thanks. Hmm. Okay. So in, interesting, interesting question. And, and I think you are the right person to ask and answer that question because I know that you are you are into these these different forms of currency. And I hope you'll add some you'll add some thoughts on that. But 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 I think it, it, there isn't there isn't a, a, an easy answer to this because what 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 determines the value of, of, of currencies is also the policies governments follow, the decisions governments take. That's, that's another big thing that affects that. And of course, and of course, some of the decisions that they take. So, so for example, um, if, if they decided to just print money, right? There's other decisions, there's other things that come up there because demand and supply also plays a role and it can either erode, erode the value of money or not, right? So, 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 so the policy decisions of, of a country can determine what happens to the value of the money, right? But 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 I think I think the, the, the what we are what we are really seeing is that is that just 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 as you look at the evolution of how we contain value, it, it's been evolving. At some point, we were containing value just using metals. At some point, we were containing value using using livestock and all those things. And eventually we started saying, let's print paper and say it contains value. But if you really think about what money represents, money is, 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 is meaningless. It, it, it finds its value from what it can acquire, right? It finds its value in that. And, and, and I think it's, 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 not a, it's, not an easy, it's not an easy thing to then say, well, this money will lose value or this money won't lose value. What we may find, we may find um, an evolution on, on how we contain value. So for example, if you look at um, things like Bitcoin and all those things, it's an evolution again to then say, well, money doesn't always have to be paper. We can always use programs, but it then removes the central bank. Do, do you see that it, it, it affects policy? So, so, so all I'm saying is that the answer to that kind of question is, is, is as broad as, 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 as the planet itself. But, but, but the point that we must not, we must not lose is that, is that money has been evolving. And, and in, in, in each age of, of life, we keep, everybody kept on saying, no, this is it. There's no other evolution that we will see. But something else happens in the world that, that, that make money evolve. So for example, you may find people, I mean, you, you can look at oil, for example. We are now thinking of oil very differently because of what's happening in the world. You think of gold, we think of gold differently for what's happening in the world. But what is likely to happen? I don't think that, and this is me now, right? I don't think that money will disappear altogether. What I think will happen is that there'll be other forms of value that will come in to work uh, side by side with money. So if you think about it, long ago, we used to really, really rely on gold, right? But right now, we have gold, but we also have money. And you know that as soon as, soon as the economies start to be very risky, people run into gold as, as a safe haven. Right? But gold didn't disappear, but money also didn't disappear. They are coexisting. They are coexisting. What may drive what then starts to get more attention is, is, is the supply and demand. So, for example, if people start getting more excited about um, you know, things like, like bitcoins and other forms of money, right? That can be that can be something that, but but remember the other problem, the other problem again 
if if government regulation is not there, if, if the central bank is not there and we have a free market at some point, because we are not rational people. And, and I think we've, 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 we've proven that economics was saying that um, when we make decisions, it's rational decision, but then behavioral finance comes and say, well, we are not so rational. So even these forms of uh, Bitcoins and things like that, one, there is no regulation and people are left to apply their, their, their irrationality. Again, the, the issue of demand and supply comes in and things lose value. So, so money retains its value simply because there's still regulation. There's still some control, right? But it's not gonna totally go away. It will coexist with other things. Thank you I so think. much. Uh, Sandra? Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So my question is, Right. Um, I hear that uh, we have to uh, uh, manage our debt, uh, acquire more assets, invest, and in, and all of that. Uh, so my question is that when it comes to uh, challenges, uh, the, the challenges that we meet when trying to acquire wealth, one of them is black tax. So how do we protect ourselves from that? And is there a way? to uh, necessarily budget or plan around uh, situations like that because uh, as we might know black tax it's it's very un unpredictable right uh, it's very very unpredictable so how do we protect ourselves from that how do we plan around that and then second question is mm, what did i want to ask oh okay where do we draw the line of maintaining our wealth and simply just being greedy and you know uh there's a saying that when you're wealthy you just want more and more and more and more and you just can't stop acquiring more wealth is there a point where you must stop acquiring wealth or it's just a continuous thing thank you okay. all right thanks 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 is, is, is it okay for, for a christian to drive a ferrari say again so is, is it okay for a Christian to drive a Ferrari, <laughs> an SDA? <laughs> yes. It, it, it is okay for, 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 for human beings to drive things they can afford while they have been Christian or Zulu or any other thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so <laughs> hey, man. Very, very good question, Sandra. And, and, and let's start with, with black tax. And, and I know that woke people hate tax but we understand what we mean by that so let's not get stuck on the term black tax is is another way of saying supporting your relatives etc etc i'm gonna start by being a christian and then i'm gonna speak in general terms i think it's first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 that says that a person who does not take care of his relatives is worse than a heathen okay so 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 i just the point i'm making here is that we should be taking care of our relatives if we are still Christians. We should be taking care of our relatives as just if you just think about Ubuntu and all of that. The problem that we have with black tax is not black tax, it is the blacks, okay? And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a problem of how we approach black tax. And, and, and I think if you read uh, Leviticus, okay, now I forget my verses, I'm, I'm, I'm not that clever, but, but, but but if you think about, I think our approach to how we take care of our relatives is, is more of a problem than taking care of our relatives. So, so, so if we take care of those who depend on us in a manner that sustains dependency, then that black tax will never end. I, I always suggest that when we do black tax, let's also do it in a way that makes people eventually to be independent of us. Now, I must say that our economy is such that not everybody is going to get a job. Not everybody is going to start a business. But there are some people in our families who can, if they are given skills, who can, if they can be sent to school, who can actually start standing on their own. My worry is that sometimes when we do black taxes, we ignore the idea of creating independence. All right. So, so, so that's, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that even the way we approach black tax, we are sometimes too extravagant in, in, in some of the approaches that, that, that we do that. So for example, I can't be 
I can't be sending money at home for them to have a, a rewinding DSTV, but they are sitting and doing nothing, right? So, so even the level of the black tax that I'm doing must also cover basic needs. And it's quite interesting that when we were sitting in lockdown, we started learning that there's essentials and non-essentials. And I think that's a good guide to make sure that black tax focuses on their essentials. But black tax must also focus on empowering people. Send your family to school. Give them money to start a shop, to start a business, to start this and that and that. It might work, it might not work, but what if it works? Then, then suddenly your black tax is not perpetual. But we cannot avoid black tax. And then the other thing I must say is that let's also be honest about what we can afford for our families. I think the idea of trying to look like you are wealthy so you can gain respect in family meetings, it actually puts you in a trap where people will ask for more because they think you have more. Let's be honest about, about our financial standing. The other thing that I must say that as we learn how to manage finances better, as we start applying austerity measures in our personal finances, let's also make sure that the people who depend on us so for example, if I'm cutting costs in my house, I then I always call a meeting with those who depend on me back home and say, those, we're doing a budget speech now. Everybody is cutting a rewinding DSTV. Everybody is sitting with a minimum. Let, let's have that kind of thinking. And, and let's also approach our, our charity, which begins at home, with an understanding that you want to do, you want to do with than to do for. So, so the, 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 the black tax that always do for people who can do for themselves, it creates dependence. And I'm not saying that now you must neglect everybody because it's very cold. You must balance compassion. You must balance um, uh, mercy, compassion with justice. In other words, in other words I mean, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, um, at, at home, one of my sisters unemployed, trying, trying to do things, trying to find jobs and all that stuff. And one of the things that we've started doing is to say, well, I'll give you money to follow Obama Masbu, who fixes electricity. You follow Obama Masbu, I'm giving you uh, transport money and food money. You follow Obama Masbu, and you, and, you, and you help him as he does electricity. During the week, Obama Masbu is at work. It's now my sister who's doing that electricity. Now, we, we, we are trying to set her up to start a business from the skills that she has so that our black tech starts reducing. It doesn't stay forever. It has a start and a finish. But let me just say, we cannot avoid black tech. Let, let, anyone who thinks they can avoid black tech, please guys, we, what, we can make sure that our children don't have black tech by the way we manage our finances and set them up and start them with businesses. But we, 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 this thing has been generational. Maybe we're the generation that's supposed to do both continue with black tax and start ending it for the next generation. And then, of course, the, your, your second question about, about greed and accumulating and, until greed. I think, I think one of the things that we must understand, and, and really this is just my philosophy, others may have a different philosophy, money on its own is, is meaningless. So accumulating money for the sake of accumulating money is a very weird thing. Money is a means to an end. What's more important is defining that end. Okay, so for example, if I define that, and people acquire money for different things. Some people want to have money so that they can build status, right? Some people want to have money so that they can give to others and, 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 and do philanthropy and all those things. Money, money finds its meaning in, in terms of what we do with it. But what we do with money has to do with our belief system and our, and our outlook on life. So, so I cannot just say um, you accumulate, therefore you are greedy. I must first look at your outlook on life. So for example, if, if your outlook is to is, is maybe let's say a, an Ubuntu outlook, a, a, a Christian outlook, already principles of Ubuntu already tells you what it means to be Ubuntu. Ubuntu, 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 Ubuntu helps other people, etc. So that will then determine what you do with your money. And um, others who just want to accumulate, remember, even that accumulating is not for the sake of accumulating. There's an end to it. Maybe someone is accumulating because they find importance in, 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 in being seen as being wealthy. That has to do with their principles. That has to do with their outlook of life. That has to do with their values. So what people do with their money tells you about their values. And, and if you want to then say, is this right or wrong, we must have a discussion around the values of the people. We must have a discussion about the person's identity. When they say I identify as a Christian, we then say, here are the Christian values. When they say I identify as a, as a, as a, as a naturalist, 
this. Here are those values. Those values will then drive them. And yes, some may look greedy compared to your values, but maybe that's just their values, right? So, so itself means nothing. It means something based on, we give it meaning based on our values. And our values have to do with our beliefs and our principles and our outlook on life. And I can never say this one is greedy, this one is not. I first have to find out what's their value system. Hmm. All right, um, Sydney. I don't know if Sydney is still here. It looks like he's fallen off. Uh, Dixam? Hi, can you hear me? Oh, here he is. Yes, please go for it, Sydney. Uh, yes, um, I think I have, um, um, I think some, some of the questions were, were answered, but mostly were on uh, black text. I, um, I think with our current, uh, as, as black people, we have a lot of responsibilities. I was listening to, uh, to, to something at, at one point, whereby this lady said, sometimes you need to let go of everything and go forward and then come back and deal with other things because there is a, a problem whereby we earn a certain salary that we need to do black text, our current responsibilities and also uh, invest for the future for our children. And most of the times we are battling between taking care of our parents and also taking care of now and also taking care of the future. So, and you gave, uh, the speaker gave a very important statistics to uh, the average millionaire is 57 and the average life span decreased to 55. So now <laughs> we are looking at, as a black person, I start working at the age of 27. I still need to invest. I still need to take care of my parents and I still need to invest in my children. So now does it mean, Uguti, do I sacrifice my own life for, the, uh, for my future generation? Or which one do I sacrifice? Because the balance there, like right now, you find that a graduate earns 20,000. And now how to accumulate wealth. And also bear in mind that uh, with black people, businesses, in the second generation, it is said that uh, black businesses are actually uh, don't continue to the third to the fourth generation. So what's the problem and what, how can we solve it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've also got uh, Dixon. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brad Colani, for the, the presentation. It's really great. Uh, mine is also a, a question. Uh, I noticed that you're emphasizing so much on, on wealth. Uh, and I hardly heard you say something about, about uh, being rich. I believe that suggests that there is a difference between uh, being wealthy and being rich. Why I'm saying this is because uh, we have heard a lot of uh, these uh, get rich quick schemes. And sometimes we've tried them. Yes, of course, we lost. But others seemed to, to have done well in that, in that part. Does it mean really there, there is no such thing as, as getting uh, rich quick? Because uh, as blacks, I believe we are very, very behind. Always want to sprint really to, to own the, the, the way we can get. Uh, it does it really mean it has to always be a long walk to our financial freedom. If you may tell us maybe the difference there, whether where exactly is the difference between being rich and being wealthy. Because sometimes we may be pursuing riches, thinking that we are trying to acquire wealth. Uh, if you can touch on that one as well, so that we, we are very clear and not try to get rich quick yet, it's nothing that is actually something that doesn't exist. Thank you so much. Okay, Kalani, I don't know if you want to uh, go for it or should I allow the two more hands, two or three more hands, and then you deal with them collectively. I don't know what, what are you comfortable so let, with? Let's do these two ones. I'm, I'm, I'm... It's Sabbath, my brain is resting, so I can't remember everything. <laughs> um, can, can, can you remind me the, the, the first questions? Because I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got sidetracked by this beautiful English of rich and wealth. And then uh, 
Just, just remind me the first Sydney question one, quickly. Yeah. So, so the reason why I ended up combining them is that C Sydney was touching on the black text, which he had already uh, dealt with. So um, he felt that he had already been answered. So his was more of like a, a comment on the black text. But then he also then uh, made mention about, um, you know. Yes, what, what, what do we making. start with? We, we end so little and there's so many things yeah, to do. Yeah, starting at 27, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, so let, let, let's start, let's start with, with, with Sydney and, um, I think, I think firstly, having, having started I'm not too sure. Am I the one who's lost the connection, or is it Kolani? Um, actually, Kolani's lost the connection. Has Kolani lost the connection? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, let's just wait for Kolani to get back, guys. Uh, sorry, he's just lost the connection. Then he was answering uh, Sydney's question. Maybe whilst Kolani is getting his connection, um, let's allow. If you don't, if you don't have a um, a question, but you have a comment. Uh, so if there's anything that, that will require Kaolani's input, then we'll wait for him. Uh, but if you have a comment on the discussion as it's currently unfolding, uh, please let's use this opportunity. So I'm going to recognize the hands that were already up uh, to see if it's a comment or a question. Joy, go for it. Thank you, Ashley. Um, hi, everyone. I think mine was more of a comment around e black text in that oftentimes we feel rushed to do things Egg higher, you know. Um, yes, you stayed in that house for the past 20 years, but all of a sudden you feel the need and the urge to want to fix it in a hurry just because you've st you've started working. And that's the wrong mentality because for you to be able to sustain to sustainably support your family, you shouldn't internal yourself in more debt. So it's okay for them to live in that house for another seven to ten years until you are comfortable enough to go back home and actually build a house that is debt free. So we need to, um, and I think someone actually did mention that they were listening to something that spoke uh, you know, around these, these lines. So we need to be very uh, careful not to bite too much that we can chew and, and make sure that our, because like Kalani said, we will always have to maintain and sustain our families. It's inevitable. Black tax will always be there unless we ourselves start creating that generational wealth. So we just need to make sure that um, you don't acquire debt in, you know, in, in trying to sustain your family. And sometimes we get overcommitted. We overcommit, Tina. Like you get so overly committed in the cars that we drive or the homes that we acquire just because the bank has said that we qualify for those loan amounts. The qualification does not mean affordability. The fact that you qualify for a certain loan does not mean you, you afford it. Why? Because they ask you to um, list your gross income. <laughs> no one has ever said listed their, their net they ask you to list your gross income. They ask you, you don't uh, put down the amount of tithe um, that you, you have to remit on a monthly basis. You forget about um, the, the tithe that you have to return when you're asking for a loan. So they give you all these ridiculous amounts and say that you can afford them only to enslave you even further. So we just need to make sure that we stick within our affordability range so that maintaining our families does not seem like a burden, but as something that is, is a part of what we are supposed to be doing. Thank you. Mm. Powerful there from Sis Joy, an expert in her own kind. I think she's also in the same uh, field, more or less with Kolani. And that's that's very interesting. There. So Sis Joy says that um, when, when, when you go and start um, applying for debt, uh, take into account your tithe as well and use your net income. Uh, so just because you qualify does not mean you can afford. Powerful. Thank you there, Sis Joy. Uh, we've got a hands from Brother Senzo. Go for it, sir. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I, I have a question for Mr. Kulan. Is he? A... No, if it's a question, we'll just ask that maybe you hold it up until he gets back. Uh, Melissa, could you please just try and get Kulani back and find out what is happening with his network there? Uh, as soon as he gets back, then we'll give you an opportunity, Senzo. Okay, uh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's coming back just now. So let's just give him a bit of some time to, to sort of like ease back in and then we'll give it over to you. Zane, please go for it.
Hello, Hello good afternoon, everyone. Difficult. Sorry, guys. Is it Zain or is it Zane? It's Zane. Politically correct. Zane. Okay, please go. Yes, can you get? Okay. No, no, no. Mine. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying you cannot build with wealth just by yourself. Why don't us as black people look for like-minded uh, people? Maybe 20 of them come up with something that we can do, a big project. Because honestly, alone, you will never achieve anything. You will never build any wealth. Get uh, to, to, to 65, the time that you retire, you realize that you've got nothing. So I, I think we, we, we need to, 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 to join hands with like-minded people, build something, then we can build wealth for our children. Thank you so much. Great stuff there on how to build wealth. Colony, welcome back. Um, Sorry guys, my battery died and um, yeah. <laughs> Excuse. Before you left Colony, yeah. you were addressing Sydney, uh, you know, late starting. Yes. Uh, the average millionaire is up there. We only start late. We've got so much to get through. Uh, so you are addressing Sydney yeah. there. And then there was uh, the second one, which we'll also get to as soon as you're done okay. with that. So, 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 so quickly, so, so the idea then is to say that let's, let's acknowledge our starting point that is, it is at a negative, right? Let's acknowledge that. Because I think, I think our problem is that we, we, we want to start at the same, at the same stage as people who are starting with a positive balance. So let, let's acknowledge that and it must, it must show up in, 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 our, in the way we spend, in the way we, we, we accumulate um, the things we accumulate. So, so for example, if I'm earning 20,000 or 27,000 rent, I'm, and I still have a family to support, it is possible to do both, but to do both, I've got to live a very simple and basic life so that I can, I can do both. But that is why when we are talking about black taxes, I was then saying that maybe our approach to black taxes must be such that the taxes have a start and a finish. In other words, in other words, in other words if I'm doing black taxes at home, I must try my best to create a, a, a system that eventually leads to independence. So in other words, I, I start them a business, I send people to school so that my black tax is four years and after that I can focus on myself. Right. So that that that's one thing. And then and then the second thing is is to actually understand how much things cost. And and, and I think I think our and it has to do with the thinking by the way. So so we have a different a, a different attitude towards debt. So we are very and I'm not, I'm generalizing here but I'm saying we are also very much and um, to we, we we look at debt as a useful thing even when it is hurtful so so we think it's normal to have installments so we, think, we don't think there's anything wrong with that you know so 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 it's think, it things like that so so let me give you let me i mean if i if i take uh, just just to answer this and and i want to show you that it has to do with our choices um let me just show you something very quickly and i think it can it can answer this thing um so okay Maybe I'll I'll show it I'll show it later. I wanted That's to show. Fine. I'll activate the screen for you. Okay, it's fine. Please go for it. I, I've activated it for you. You can go okay. ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. So I just want to show you something that that our choices. Okay. It's fine. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? So 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 also look at these two people. They are both twenty five. The earning 35,000, it could be 25,000, it could be anything. Their life must match their salary. But, but I want to show you that the choices that we make, how we approach life, the life that we want to live while we only earn 20,000, while we only earn 25,000, can also determine what happens. Well. Now, look at these two people. This one earns, earns 35, this other one earns 35. They are both 25. But C4 is left with a minus 14,000 because his attitude is that I want this particular life even if I don't afford it. And therefore, when he thinks of debt, he thinks of debt as something that helps him to continue living the life, like, like I said, having a form of wealth, but you deny the power thereof. So he's living like a wealthy person. Zodwa, who has the same issue, also lives with the same amount, but he only she, she's left with 58 rand. She doesn't have a credit card. And she's she's retaining tight. And if you look, if you look at, and I'm just showing retaining tight just to show that they are also religious, right? If you look at both of them, their expenses, they both have black taxes, and their, their black taxes are equal. Can you see that with the same amount of money, 
both of them can make different choices about the, where they buy groceries. They can make different choices about taking takeaways to, to, to doing takeaways or getting scuffing. They can make different choices about the address they live in. Zoto understands that I am not at that level, but, but Sipo wants a certain life that doesn't match his salary and therefore he ends up in debt. So the point I'm making is that some of the choices that we make, they actually determine how, how far we can stretch our money. But some of those choices are because we don't understand that certain things take time. It takes time to get to a point where I can, I can comfortably drive a certain car. It takes time to get to a point where I can comfortably shop in a particular grocery shop. It takes time. Zodwa has understood this. C4 hasn't understood it. He still wants the life of someone who earns 80,000 rents with a salary of 35,000. That's our other problem. And again, the way we get into debt, he wants to drive an expensive car. He wants to stay in an expensive apartment. He wants expensive clothing, but he still wants to be wealthy. He still wants to take care of people at home. It, you can't do all of them. You can't pretend you are wealthy and, and, and then be actually wealthy. If you, if you look at him, by the time he's 35, if you just look at their, at their net worth, net worth is assets minus liability. By the time at age 30, he'll be worth 220,000. At age 35, he'll be worth 967. But look at Zoto. She doesn't drive the most expensive car. But she understands that I am not wealthy. And, and I think that's the thing, but I need transport. So he's acknowledging that she needs transport, but it doesn't have to be the most expensive. I am not there yet. And that's the thing that we must pace ourselves. So she drives that, she stays in a basic, in a basic townhouse. Uh, she's, she's, she's renting another one, etc. cetera. She, she still wants to look good, but she only buys when there are sales because she understands what she can afford. And I think it's the issue of being honest about where we are in life, what can we afford and pacing ourselves. But look at her network. At 35, she'll be worth, at 30, she'll be worth 754,000. At 35, she'll be worth 3.5 million. They still earn the same amount of money, but they are choices. And if you look at the details, it's nothing out of this world. It's just the choices that they're making. You can even stretch it and look at how they're gonna be when they get to retirement. Again, Zota will be will be will have 23 million rents at retirement. Sipo will have 7 million because again. He still wants to look a certain part. So when he changes job, he catches his pension. So all I'm saying, the point I'm making here is that, yes, I agree that we don't earn a lot, but I, but I also want to say that some of our problems have to do with our choices and how we view wealth and how we view being wealthy. And this idea of wanting to look wealthy without, without the, the tools of wealth. We, 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 when we want to look wealthy through consumption, yes, we create problems ourselves we can't build we, we, we can't we can't um we, we can't look at we can't build wealth but but to do that start by acknowledging that i am not like a a a, a, a hilda smith i am there's a background that looks different and that background is part of me and and i can change it by my action and that's really that's really where where, where i want to be and then i want to go to the rich versus wealthy um I think that's English, okay? I think that's English. So I'll leave that alone. But, but, but what I'll do, I'll talk about the idea when you were saying that, but there's this thing of getting rich very fast and others are taking longer, okay? The first thing I must admit is that to build wealth through a job, a normal age to five, is very difficult and it's going to take very long. And an average person will work 40 years. And, and doesn't it sound like uh, 40 years the Israelites traveled from uh, Egypt to, to Kenya? It, it really takes long. And, and if you go back to the story of the Israelites is traveling to, 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 to Kenya, they took 40 years, but there was a shortcut that could have taken them between three and 11 days. Go and look at the map of Egypt and Kenya and draw a straight line. And then go and look at the routes that they took. So, so building wealth through a job, is like the Israelite who went 40 years like that. But if you build it through entrepreneurship, it can shortcut it. And the, the simple reason is this. Remember that when you are at work and you are working, you are selling your skill and your time in exchange for price, which is your salary, right? Again, if you are running a business, you are selling your product or your service uh, in exchange for money, which is the same price. But here's the difference. When you are an, an employee, you only have one customer, one employer. Very few of us are allowed to have more than one employee. So already you are limited by the number of customers you can sell your skill and your time to. 
But the one who's an entrepreneur has 58 million customers in South Africa. Do, already the starting point is, is so vast, is so vast, right? So, so one of the quickest way of making money, obviously, it is to, through, through a business, but a well-run business with a better, with a better business idea. Because everybody wants to start a business and nine out of 10 startups, they fail. But I don't like the story because we then give up. I want you now to follow the one out of 10 that doesn't fail and say, what are they doing? And do exactly that because it still works, right? But it's the fastest way of, of making money. But let's go, let's go to the uh, get rich quick uh, schemes, right? The Bible has already warned us. You know, the Bible has, has everything. And, and I just want to take this verse very quickly. Um, can I get to it very quickly? I want to just read a verse for you in the Bible. If you go to Proverbs 13, verse 11, it talks about that. It says, it says wealth from get rich quick schemes, it dwindles very fast. And wealth from hard work grows over time. So, so it takes, even in business, it takes time to build, to build that money. That's why even when you invest in shares, you must invest for the long term because a new business sometimes take, takes up to 30 months to turn around and become and become quite, 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 quite profitable. It takes time, but it takes a lot of hard work. Now, the question is, can we make money through get rich quick skin? Yes, you can, but sometimes it's not sustainable. So let's not lie and say and say no, no, no. You can't get rich uh, from, from 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 making a lot of from from quick quick skin. You can if you get in on time and get out fast. Because remember, the, the the ones who come in early in these pyramids are the ones who, who make a lot of money. The rest of us are financing the ones who came in early. So timing is important. And remember, that is trading. It is not investing. It is not long term. So money can be made in get rich quick quick skin, but don't ever get into something you don't understand. Because if you don't understand something, it means you don't understand how it makes money, then you won't understand how it loses money. So you'll think you are still good and all the signs that it's losing money are there, but because you don't understand it, you still sit in while others are running away who understand it. So understanding is also important. So, so the point I'm making here, I don't want to go and make a blanket statement that says you can't make money very quickly. I'm saying you can, but but the percentages of people who make money very quickly are very low and the speed, it's those who get in first, but also don't get into something you don't understand how it makes money because you won't know when it's losing money because you won't know, you won't understand. You're watching the news, the news are telling you that it's going bad, but you don't know what they're talking about and you are busy losing money and you become the last one, the last one who's in. So, so you're concerned. don't get me wrong. You can make a lot of money as an employee if you spend less than you earn and you take the surplus and go and invest it in business and investments that are busy making money through entrepreneurship. You can do that. You can, you can, you can make money by having great talents. And those talents, remember, people who are on idols, uh, maybe not the South African one, because I saw another CD selling, selling for five rent for an idol. But, but, but <laughs> people who are talented make a lot of money. But remember, have you seen how long the queues are on idols? And there's only one winner. So also, it's a crowded place. Very few make it. People who are employed, they become CEOs. I showed you the guys who are earning 150,000 pounds a day. It can be made through employment. But there's only one CEO in a company of 5,000 people. There's not 5,000 CEOs. So again, the numbers, not all of us are going to make it. But, but, it doesn't mean you can't build wealth through your salary. Just spend less than you earn and deprive yourself. They, there is nothing wrong with driving the cheapest car because cars don't make us wealthy. Cars don't make us wealthy. And when I've built wealth, I man, I can drive a Ferrari and still be a good Christian. I'm going to end it there with that question. I hope, I hope uh, I've, I've covered it. Thanks, Kalani. Uh, thanks, thanks, Paul. Uh, I, I'm going to read a few comments here from Facebook uh, before taking the four hands that are currently up now on, on the Zoom platform. Um, I've also been following the chats, guys, in the, um, in the Zoom platform. I see that most of them are discussions uh, that have been answered. But if you feel that um, you had an important question that you posted in the chat that wasn't addressed, please raise your hand. Colin is still here with us and he's going to deal with it. Um, but I think most of the questions there had to do with black tax uh, and things along those lines. But I will also go through the chats as soon as I'm done with the Facebook ones. Uh, Okanalelo is on Facebook and he says that, there are relatives that appear after work has been done. So this was posted at the time when we're still addressing black tax. And it says, they are people that appear after the work has been done only to enjoy the fruits. That's so sad. And how do we deal with those folks? They, were, they weren't there all along. 
I remember a few weeks ago, Kolani, I had to do a presentation uh, on Facebook along those yeah. lines where uh, these people just rock up out of nowhere. You know, when we were struggling, they went there. But when we take in the graduation selfies, now they're there. They're the mo most supportive. They, they want to tell us what to do with our money. They want to tell us, uh, what do we do with those folks? And we, we have those aunties and, 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 and grannies. Um, maybe let me just read a few more comments. Uh, here's with Sister Primrose Poswa as well. She comes and says, how do you avoid debt as a new black graduate entering uh, as a working class when employers expect you to be driving because of the nature of your job together with issues like black, black tax, as Sandra has asked. And I think Kolani has already touched on this. I, I mean, I remember when I had to start articles as well. When you start articles, you need to have a car. And it's difficult because, you know, they want you to have a car. You don't have a father or a mother that are going to give you a spare car that is seated there somewhere. And then there's no bank as well that wants to give you a loan to buy that car because you're so much of a high risk. Uh, and oh, Primrose has touched on that. But I think uh, your last comment there may have uh, answered a, a portion of that. Um, and then Utokas is also coming in there and saying, yeah, and when we add on top of the car, let's remember the maintenance also which is so expensive. Uh, and then Utokas is coming in with a comment as well and says, if your parents are still working, please encourage them to save. They must save. They must not just rely on you and think about you are just their investment. But see, um, as they say, no, encourage them to save. Dokas Day is saying. Uh, Tandi TP says, good strategy, help them stand for themselves than creating dependence. Um, and a lot of comments that are that are very thankful for the way that you've broken things down and how you've been answering the questions. Thank you so much for that, Polani. Uh, Utando Dawini says, some people would not help you establish or push your business for your own growth, but would keep offering you employment. That is not helping the black tax issue. Uh, don't give me the fish. Teach me how to go and fish for myself. Um, Uchudi Mapanga there says, afternoon, I think we must have a follow-up talk on how to make or earn an extra income, ways to make uh, extra cash. Thanks for the talk. I've also been having many of those popping in into our WhatsApp box as well. People want to follow up. Uh, Mr. X, yeah. this is not the end of you, but... Can I, can, I, yes. can, I come in on, on, can I come in on just a few? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Can I come in? Yeah. yeah so, 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 so... So, 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 so firstly, and, and, I, and I really, really um, agree with, 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 I think it's, is it, is it Pindima Pound saying, we must also learn how to make more money. Remember, you, do, you don't grow by cutting, you grow by actually growing. So, so, so our approach to building wealth must not always focus on cutting expenses. It must also focus on growing the top line. Um, so, so, so I really, really support that. And, and I think technology has created more ways to generate in Income. And I think we must really, really organize that, that, that conversation with relevant people. It's so important that we don't just focus on cutting, we must also focus on growing. I, I just want to say something about relatives who come late and all the stuff, just to add that. I think we must also learn to be, I think we are too nice all the time, okay? It, it, it's okay to say no. It is okay to set boundaries. Remember when you're doing your budget, you are learning to say no to certain things on your budget. Say it also to people. And, and I think, I think that, that, that's important that, that we also say no, even to those we support. Just, just say no. No, I can't. Have, have a criteria. Think about a business. A business when it's going to be doing a CSI project, a project of donation. It has a criteria. It looks at applications. It doesn't just take money and throw it and, and dishes it out. That's how it's creating sustainable. It, it, it's so important in, in my own family there are people that i don't i don't give money to because i'm saying but we are giving you money uh, you blow it no 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 there's food at home so the basics if you want food go home there's food you are not getting any money we must learn to say no because we have limitations guys this money is is a limited resource it, learn to say no also learn to identify when you are being abused learn to also say this is all i can afford and just just like that. I remember when I started working, when I, when I used to go home, because I, I knew that I had, I, had a, I had a difficulty in saying no. So I would actually go and withdraw the exact amount of money that I want to spend when I'm home. And I will leave my cards and everything. And I'll go home. And I know this is all I have. 
I don't feel guilty when someone asks me for 10 rands when I've exhausted everything I have. I have a clean heart. It's all I have. Let, let's learn to create those boundaries. Otherwise, it's isopel. Isopel. And then the last one I want to just um, highlight again is, is around avoiding debt. And, and, and it's a valid point to say that when we start off, they, there's some debts we can't avoid because you must start by getting a car and all that stuff. And, and that's why I said you must, you must really acknowledge that we are not starting on a positive. We're not even starting at zero. Many of us are starting at a minus. Because you know that about yourself, what then are you doing with a very expensive car? Because, yes, you need transport, but it doesn't have to be a, an expensive car. It doesn't have to be a brand new car. I mean, if I'm a crazy that are still going, really, you can buy a second-hand car that is still safe and save some money. The problem that I have is how long we stay on debt. Huh? How long do we stay on debt? So our problem is that after five years, when you get an opportunity to no longer have car debt, you want to upgrade and, and enter into a, new, into a new debt. You can keep your car. If you read uh, the book, The Millionaire Next Door, the average millionaire drives their car for an average of seven years. And that car was a second-hand car. If I'm a crazy, there's a Cape Town, there's nothing that, that should stop you from keeping your car more than five years so when you finish paying off your car you you then continue saving the similar amount of money for the next five years so that the next car that you buy you buy it for cash or at least almost cash the idea the idea is to understand that we might not be able to avoid debt at the start but afterwards we have no excuse to stay longer in debt than we should be our our point should be trying to get out of debt quite fast